Ham and Jimmy. All right. Uh, Jonathan, give me a nice round. The seat comes up before we have Claire and then Gary. We haven't seen him in a while. We'll take care of these super prizes that we have here. It was 1957. I was at home and I pulled on my corduroy and my baseball jacket and left home. It was October 30th, 1957. I hitchhiked to New York. I walked through Fresno to the highway. Well, it was six o'clock and it was getting dark and no one was stopping. So I went into a drive-in and the waitress fed me onion rings and french fries, all of that slow. The next morning I walked out into the highway and got 11 miles down the road. And I walked down into the culvert next to the road and fell asleep against the road. I woke up about 11 o'clock and got up and stood next to the road a baby blue Ford coupe stopped and picked me up. Where are you going? And I said, New York. And he said, hop in. I'm going home. He lived in Connecticut. Well, we made it across. It was already November. And Easter rolled around, and I was working in a coffee house on McDougal Street. And they were going to have an open reading. And this would be my first open reading. I signed up. The owner being a friend of mine by now said, well, whatever you do, don't say you're from San Francisco. Somebody lousy was from there. I said, okay. So I got up and said, I'm Jonathan and I'm from far away. There were a couple of guys in my first open reading you might have heard of. Allen Ginsberg and Gregory Corso. They became lifelong friends. And I kept writing and they kept writing. And I met a lot of writers in my day. And I did a lot of words passing through my mind. I came back here after working on 150 shows on and off Broadway with people that you've heard of and with directors you've heard of. And I was paid for all the theater I've ever done. And I was told, well, that's phenomenal. And I said, it's only right. I worked. I worked in production. And I made a living. Not a, not a million bucks, but a living. One night in the village, I'm walking, and I ran into a blonde. We stopped and spoke. There was so much in a while we bumped into one another and we chat. 
one night she said, a couple of friends of mine and I will be at the bitter end. Come. Well, the bitter end was a coffee house, nightclub. Woody Allen did a stand-up there. So I went after two songs in their first set. I said, they aren't here for love. They were Peter, Paul, and Bernard. And God knows I was right. And they were lovely because they were a plus. They didn't sing any negative type of song. But they lifted us up in the clouds. Yes, that's what I did in the first quarter of my life. Special before something special and before something special. Kara Sue is coming up next before Garrett and Jeanette. Give her a nice warm up. She doesn't say much in public. Okay, here are two Cuban love sonnets. The first one is called Baby Bumblebee Sonnet. My love, if you are hungry for a bite, there is nothing I can offer but my lips. Although with time and space they are out of sight, and lips are flavorless in movie clips. But in your heart and mind, I'm always close, whispering, singing, laughing by your side. So when you feel the petals of a rose wet with morning dew, you will abide the curse of Newton's law of gravity that keeps us rooted in our separate place, instead of falling with some certainty towards the Caribbean Sea with grace. A flaming kiss my cherry's jubilee sends from afar by baby bumblebee. Okay. Next one is. Yeah. <laughs> I thought you said you were. I thought. I don't care about love songs. Cuban love songs. I know, but I thought so. I thought it might. Be. All right, just yeah. just checking. Okay. Okay. Next one is called "Waiting for the Delivery of a Letter to Cuba." They have raised a flag in Washington. We have raised our flag in Havana. Footprints mad tracking on both turfs, but my letter has not been delivered to Cuba. A paper envelope is thrown in with the euphoria, weighted down by the more substantial packages. Muy importante, with official seals crushing a handwritten address and two pretty stamps. Every day it wanders in a mysterious place of cigarros, espressos, and some concretes. Ask the whirlwind whipping with the longest tail. When will the postman whistle, Ola aloha? Or maybe Uncle Sam is holding the fateful letter, decoding a love message in time of peace. Thank you. And now Garrett Murphy is coming up next before Jimmy. Give Garrett a nice respectable round of applause. I'm going to call it here. I'm going to arrange it up for him because. Where are you going to sign? I'm going to set my hand to play. It's in and out. Just one more. Baloney 
home for sale. Obama's been in the Kool-Aid again. The blue line's been shedding crocodile tears, playing sad songs on their millimeter vials about how they're now stalked by those they've long stalked. So he signs a mall and Amber Alert for Cops. Amber Alert for Cops treat every oppressor to project themselves as victim as soon as they're exposed for what they're perpetrated. We all know what the real victims would call this one, see below. One would think if the lines wanted to hear salami, salami, baloney, they'd have enough sense to visit the corner meat market. Only problem is they'd have to blurt it out themselves, and that would mean exposing their own hyperbole, especially with the baloney. Oh, where are their mules for the red alert for the rogues among their bunch, or a missing alert for their own common sense? Nice. <laughs> and, uh, and someone, someone has come out, out of this hole of late Dr. Palmer, we presume. Like all the gleeful quacks of a kind, Walter Palmer fantasizes about his quest. He wants his share of glory too to be sanctified by the organization known as the System. He sets out to Zimbabwe for jungle glory. He bags a big one, a really big one, not only a king, but the most renowned one. Walter has bagged his own game. He returns to his old glory retone with pride in his heart and beating on his chest. But wait a minute, something is very wrong here and it will cost Walter dearly. For you see, in his quest for ultimate sanctification, it appears Walter in his haste shot dead an African lion. That black mane must have fooled him. Now instead of the sanctification he was craving for the system, Walter is now public enemy number one on the run. He didn't realize he could only be sanctified by the system had he killed an African human. And unlike Bini, he cannot yelp for help, Cecil help. Cecil can't help him now or anymore. Cecil was the one whom Walter shot down in his misguided quest for system sanctification. That was a truly amazing story. I couldn't believe it. And now, Jimmy, come on up and stand and deliver our mini of the evening. Thank you. And then it goes to Mike. <clears throat> he used to read other people's poetry at various venues about town. He read T.S. and Kerouac, Ginsburg, Ben Johnson and Rousseau, Tolstoy, some Laozi, Gellin and Le Goup. He read song lyrics and Greek tour guides has found poetry. I found one on the bus that he read. I know, because I was there and heard him read out loud what I had heard in reverent awe of quiet insight. I got that one round here somewhere, but it'd take me hours to go find it, stuffed in some notebook. It was a screed writ by some junior high school player I suspect, in response to his teacher's question posed, I guess, about black lives, as they put it. Do they matter or do they not? This is what I found, what he read, what he wrote. She is sunshine. She is light, she is consolation for the night. She is springtime, she is rhyme. She is the reason behind the smiles. Sometimes a displaced angel falls from clouds above. The shattered hopes and dreams congeal in love. You cannot chase it. You can only be awake enough to feel. Her breath of fresh coming by fallen into your life and you got to catch it. Wow. Black Lives Matter. This is called The List of Long Loves. I'm writing to you from the long distance and lengthy list of lost loves caught between flight and fury. Tis Grievo. I write you, 
so our memories might fall out of our eyes and into our minds, hands, hearts. To breathe your air once more. Feel your whisper in a movie. Your myriad religions of infinite kindnesses coming in my lonely ear. To hear the rustle of your overcoat some blustery day. To witness the swirly swish swish of your stockings amidst a silence passe between us. Our lives so crowded by the rest of us. No blame. Kupas loca. Blame is crazy. Te estranio, like a clock unplugged, misses time. I miss you like a place at the table misses a ghost. I miss you like the silent spring misses songbirds. The way your bright candle misses my purposeless darkness. This list is too long, this lonely, crowded list. There are too many of us wallowing in our own particles. Wow. And then I want to close with uh, a memory. I want to close with a memory poem about the days, two days away from us, the anniversary of 9-11. So I thought I'd bring that up again. And I'm going to close with this because it goes along with these other ones. It's called Angel in a Rabbit Hole. In the Rabbit Hole. Do you remember the woman in the hole in the wall waving at us so serenely, proudly thinking she was saved? Hi, it's me up here, waving up here. My name is Annie, I'm fine. She wore white slacks and a navy sweater. 86th floor or thereabouts. Rose could use some water. The black smoke curling away over her head from the plastic fires, a sign the building was cooling. She's leaning against a bent pillar, waving. I'm up here, I'm okay. Send a chopper when you get one. The fire's almost out. These carpets don't burn forever. Hey, the stairs will be cool soon enough. But I don't know if Rosemary can make it down. Call the kids, tell them we're going to a movie tonight. We'll see gremlins. Free pizza, too. Ha <laughs> ha, I think she's smiling. The smoke's almost gone now. I'm going to stay here with Rose, she cries. We can see Rosemary slumped off to our left, seated, her feet dangling over the city as if she had inhaled too much burnt plastic, but still enjoying the view. I love you. Minutes later, the building fell out from under her feet. 9-11, most sad. Jamie, I want to reboot. Wow. Thank you. Hey, Hammond. You know, I remember that picture. The, the picture of the, of, of the people. Yeah, the one I was writing about? Yeah. yeah. And it really happened. Well, the words I put in. Well, I know. Fine. No, no, no. The situation is. Plagiarizer. <laughs> Plagiarizer. So, uh, yeah, I can you the honor of street. cutting those, please? Oh, yeah. well, you're right every here. time I do it, I never win. I have to say, my numbers in there. We're going to take care of the prizes that were designed with your minds in mind. While he's doing that, I'll leave it just back to you. Poets and writers, it's a collection of poets and writers and writers' ass things. It's all, they're kind of old, but there's good resources in there. And I wanted to make all one package. Hey, Dashner Literary Journal, the most recent issue. Uh, Sally Love Saunders, Bits of Thought, very good. Minute 444 from 2006. There are some pretty good poems in here. I read them, so that's nice. And then two po two uh, collections. Both involve uh, Jack Kirschman. One as a translator and one as an editor. Before me there were deserts and then denizens of hope. So both of these have excellent pieces in them. And of course there is the mini feature and the keynote. So he has shuffled the cards. I shall take these cards. And like I like to say, when you sign in, you put your name by a number, and he got the cards on the number, so I just shuffled the card. He already shuffled them. May I have a drum roll, please? Thank you. And our first person of the evening. Mr. Al Nightingale. 
Come on up here and take one of these fine prizes, like I said, designed with your mind. And then, of course, over there is the sign-in sheet for the mailing, just in case you want to do that. Any of these are yours, you can do one of those if you're going to come next to you. Yeah, the keynote means you read the poem by someone else, mm -hmm. and then you can also sign up for the open. Mm -hmm. So I'll put you for the keynote. Okay. okay. Uh, Our next winner is Clara. Who? Clara, did she go? I don't know. I don't think so. Who's that? Did she leave? No, here she is. Yes. Oh, here she is. Clara, you're a, you're a winner. You may already be a winner. You may already be a winner. Yeah. I am. Yeah, you are. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Any one of these five things. We have a mini, we have these, we have this. You might have gotten this. Because you're in. So, but then there are these, these are uh, works of Jack Urshman involvement and then a couple of it follows this down. You can do it. Oh, well, the you got already got paid. Oh, thank you. There you go. You're okay. Pal? Dr. Robbins. Dr. Robbins. There's a song, Dr. Robbins. There is. I never heard of this. Dr. Robbins. 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 Okay. Beautiful. Good choice. Uh, Jimmy. Yeah. What? You're a winner. Well, this don't beat these legal. That's impossible. Oh, hey, that's true. Is this the latest? That's the latest one. It's very good. Jack um, Kirshman's editor. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's a good one. That, that's, a, that's actually good. That's a good Minotaur. Who did that? I don't know. Oh, that's not good. I get that's mine. A long writer's ask is really good. Hey, this is good advice. If somebody wants advice on writing, God, here's one for everybody. I turn these in. You guys should come in and just take them and pass them on. These are the girls from the little glimmer train, and uh, they give good advice from all these different writers. You know that you can do. It. I guess I'll take. All right, there you go. See, it's already happened. Uh, Richard. Oh. Oh. I like his enthusiasm. Oh. More both. I know. Well, these aren't hard. Are you having a problem with the back too? I'm just old. Oh. We're trying to get some hardbound books. Hard 